This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. I mentioned a process called molecular deconstruction in my last video regarding earthquakes and our technical capabilities. Another term for that is molecular dissociation. When you take molecular dissociation to its ultimate end, we are capable of continually, infinitely dissociating part of a molecule with the other parts of the molecule until they are rendered an aerosol lighter than air. They're even smaller than dust which would fall to the ground. They become an aerosol lighter than air. We have that technology. I'm going to show you one example of TTA rendered molecular deconstruction or molecular dissociation on an iron beam. As you'll notice here in this example, these iron beams are strong, straight up in the air, standing firm. They're metal. They're iron. They're standing straight up in the air. And we're going to watch as they begin to fall at their base and before they hit the ground, before they even come close to hitting the ground, they are rendered dust. This is a perfect example of molecular dissociation. In this first picture, very strong. The second picture at the base, it begins to weaken and bend. The third picture, it's beginning to turn to dust. And you can see part is still metal, part is now dust. Some are so small they be actually become aerosols and float away into the air. But this is, and this is becoming dust. It hasn't even hit the ground and it has become dust. Now let me show you the fuller picture of this video and where it was taken. Yes, this is the World Trade Center on 9-11. Over and over again we see this beam was rendered to dust and I'm here to tell you that was done by a TTA that was directed energy causing molecular dissociation rendering it to dust and even aerosol particulates now if the powers that be can do that, what stops them from totally destroying believers? I'm here to tell you, if you don't believe God stands in the gap, you have to be blind. God himself said, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan will be impossible for them. Jesus said, regarding the last days. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. We're going to be here through to the end, my friends. God, for our sakes, is going to shorten these terrible days ahead. God himself stands in the gap. This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Thank you for watching, and God bless you. To help us get our mind around the phenomena at the World Trade Center, Dr. Judy Wood begins by reminding us how much structure was there. We have two towers, huge towers, very large objects.
once upon a time. Let's look at how they're built. The core columns, huge beefy beams. And then we have the outer columns and floors bolted between the two. These floors are pretty elaborate structures with this webbing of uh, trusses underneath. Can you imagine putting your arms around one of these beams? It's pretty large. I look at this picture and wonder how someone could believe that every single piece of cross-section would disintegrate at the same time due to heat, due to whatever. And as they're building it, you can see the very uh, substantial core columns. Looks like it's half the floor space. And then they went away. So here we have WTC3, also known as the Marriott Hotel. Right after WTC2 was destroyed, had this big gouge out of it. Vertical slice separating this, the southernmost edge of it. This was before Tower 1 was destroyed, and when Tower 1 was destroyed, the rest of this building went away. And we have these three weak checks stabbed into the pavement. And here is what's left. This little tiny stub looked like it was the base of this tall, narrow portion. Just a little tiny bit of it left. This is looking north, northeast, across where Tower 1 used to stand an hour or two earlier. Where did it go? From this down to here's a top view of the site. Building 4, you don't have the main body of it, you just have the north wing. Where did it go? Where are the towers? Beggar's Trust is 40 stories, so we're missing 60 or 70 stories of building, more than half of it. Where'd it go? Where are the towers? Where are the towers? Where'd it go? Tower one is so overshadowed by this eight-story remnants of Building 6. What's wrong with this picture? You should have at least a hundred more stories of the north wall of Tower 1. Where is the north wall? Where'd it go? How much energy did it take? Well, let's look at some pattern recognition here. We have Mount St. Helens. We have a nuclear test in Nevada. 
And we have one of the WTC buildings coming apart. To me, they look similar. Probably a similar amount of energy was involved. This is Hiroshima. A few days before Hiroshima, would anyone have imagined this? Just everything gone. Dr. Wood documented phenomena so unusual, she had to coin new terms like dustification. So what about the dust? There was a lot of dust. As it happens, here is Tower 1 and Tower 2. A large portion of it filled New York, filled the air, went everywhere. And it looks pretty uniform in size, except for the paper. Landed on the fruit. It's like a fresh snow. Here's a view from the north. What covered the wheat checks was aluminum cladding, which you can see those pieces falling off. But they don't trail dust. But the steel wheat checks trail dust. This is an interesting. This is a rather large wheat checks falling here with dust shooting out behind it. Is the building just turning to dust? Why? This is tower two closer to the ground. Do you see any solid pieces of building coming down? I don't. I see aluminum cladding falling, but the rest is this type of dust that seems to trail behind the wheat checks. And then we have dust everywhere. This Cushman scooter kicks up dust that just stays in the air. If you drive down a dirt road, your pickup truck is going to kick up dust, but it pretty quickly settles out. This does not settle out like that. The reason the dust stays in the air is because of the ultra-fine particle size, below one quarter of a micron in diameter. Thomas Cahill of the University of Davis, California, studied the particle size distribution of the minerals in the fumes. Typical mechanical crushing creates coarse and fine particles. Very fine and ultra-fine particles are essentially non-existent. The graph heads to zero and stays there. Now look at what was measured at ground zero. There is an extraordinary presence of ultra-fine particles. This is conclusive proof that molecular dissociation took place. Cahill did not count particles less than 0.09 microns. Is this because he was afraid of what he knew he would find? Here are four consecutive shots, and you can see these columns just turn to dust. Here's a video clip, and you can watch this turn to dust. So is this what happened to the entire building? Perhaps. Let's look at it a little bit more carefully. These core columns that were left standing for whatever reason are strong and rigid. That's an, a very tall, unsupported column. 
and the next frame it starts to tip and then it turns to dust before it even tips over. And as this dust cloud rolls out, it's very energetic. It looks like it's boiling. It's expanding in all directions. Tremendous amount of dust. The behavior of the dust clouds greatly resembled a phenomenon seen in volcanic eruptions. Known as a pyroclastic flow, this eruption of 1500 degree gas and rock speeds down the mountain. The disintegration of the buildings was not the only bizarre 9-11 mystery. We have holes. So let's look at those holes. If you look at the scale, using these wheat checks here, because we know about what the spacing is on them, you can figure out these are about 24 foot diameter holes, or cylindrical cutouts many of them the same diameter. Look how far down the middle of that hole is. It's empty down to the ground level. Eight stories of building, gone. This is a look from inside that hole. You count down from the top, you can count down eight stories. So you know you're at ground level. Then we have building five that was over in the northeast corner. Nice round cylindrical holes. This one turns out is a roof flap hanging over it, but it's still the cylindrical cutout. This, this one looks like a larger diameter. But what caused those round holes? We have this cylindrical cutout in the middle of Liberty Street. You notice this outer wall is sort of leaning back and it's got a cutout missing that lines up with that hole. Kind of interesting. We look down into that hole. It's just what caused the hole, it's open. We also notice these different sub-levels have the reinforced concrete uh, bars sticking out of it. And this piece of I-beam is pretty fascinating. It looks like it just withered away to nothing. It's eroded to nothing. Thinned out. And there's another hole up here. See, when you start looking at this, you start noticing lots of little holes. And they coalesce into bigger holes. So if we look at all of these grouped together, lift off a few of the wheat checks that are laying over the top of them we can look down into that hole and climb down into it. We're climbing down into the basement of the second tower and to me it looks that these folks are walking through a puddle of water. We may have heard of rumors of molten metal but I see no indication of it here and this picture was taken a week after 9-11. Dr. Wood was denying the existence of molten metal at ground zero, denying extreme high temperatures in general. Yet the effects of extraordinary heat were all around. We have this fused mass of steel and concrete that's known as the meteorite. We see the mushroom cloud expand rapidly upwards and outwards against the wind. In fact, the Twin Towers mostly disintegrated into shooting point sources 
trailing what resembles rocket exhaust. Rocket exhaust looks the way it does because it is expanding in all directions. And that is because it is moving from very high temperature and pressure to much lower temperature and pressure. Spraying whipped cream behaves the same way for the same reason. The contents of the can are under great pressure. When any substance expands outwards in all directions, there is simply no other explanation besides a rapid release of built up pressure. And as we get closer to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1500 degrees. We've had some small windows into um, what we thought was a core at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven. You know, it was just roaring inside. And it's just a bright, bright reddish orange color. See that stuff he's pulling out? What was that, Chief? We're going to hold off on the water. See the stuff he's pulling out? Yeah. It's red hot. Another interesting phenomenon is toasted cars. A large number of toasted cars, um, I don't mean just a few burnout cars, I mean this, this weird things happening that don't make sense. After Tower 1 was destroyed, that's the second tower that was destroyed, suddenly these cars were on fire. There's mountains of paper in between, large volumes of paper that didn't burn. Why are these cars over here on fire where nothing between the tower and the car is? And after the fire stopped, we noticed the cars are all rusted in this lot. Then there's cars over on FDR Drive that had another peculiar pattern to them. This door looks like it just wilted and the frames for the windows flopped over. I don't know what happened to his front tire, but it looks like he still has the um, steel belting of the tire in it, so he had radial tires. Fires don't cause steel to melt. We have various other interesting patterns. This vehicle was parked a building away on the other side of the post office. What happened to it? If it had debris fall through it, why isn't the roof destroyed? The sides eaten out, wheels eaten, fire, spontaneous combustion. Here's that toasted lot. Paint is fine here, not here. And don't know what that is. Is it a car, a truck? I call it the what's it car. This vehicle is sitting on top of this one. Why is it so rusted? This is the day after 9-11. Look at these two cars placed on top of one another. I think when you, when you think about the impact that uh, these planes must have had, it's hard to to visualize um, it because everything melted. But here, at least you have some remnants. You have literally an engine uh, that is melded together with other parts of the car. Moving over, you've got another car they moved here. It looks like it's been through a war. Uh, you can see uh, the papers, all the, uh, the burned out papers from the building. You see the soot and the dirt, and it just shows you how devastating this blast was. Look across the street there. Uh, you've got a Con Ed uh, truck that, you know, some of the Con Ed people now looking at, examining, trying to figure out uh, which truck that actually was. But that truck, too, uh, in terrible shape. Uh, so while many of the uh, items, the steel, uh, was literally melted, 
We see more of these strange phenomena. Cars burning, not paper. Paper in the tree, tree lost its leaves. Paper on the ground, only vehicles burning. That's pretty aggressive burning. Another one lost its engine. Where'd it go? Same here. Engine's gone. So is the cab. And the um, ladder just kind of wilted down over it. Van with missing door handles. That seemed to be a common theme. A lot of door handles gone. Different kind of material. This is West Broadway. So what happened on that street? Here's a top view of that same street. This uh, aggressive cloud looks like it did something unique. As all the vehicles along this street were toasted. Maker's Trust across the street had some interesting events occur. This building, according to FEMA, had no fires in it. What happened to this beam? That's not from a mechanical overload. This was a horizontal beam supporting the floors. Why would it shrivel up that way, like uh, you would curl a ribbon for a package. Horizontal structural beams are under great tension. If some extremely hot reacting substance went by and then tension was lost, shriveling up is exactly what would happen. Clearly, something extraordinary destroyed the World Trade Center. But what? According to Dr. Wood, it was some kind of directed energy weapon. Along with co-author Morgan Reynolds, they released the Star Wars Beam Weapon. Although she does have some curious blind spots, Without doubt, Dr. Judy Wood created the most comprehensive study of the visual record. you 
So we know they do have some weapons and devices, directed energy weapons that we don't know about, we didn't know about until this. And there's pictures of them. We have this, this shoots down things. Uh, you add more onto this to get more power. We don't know how much power is required. These are publicly available images of different types of weaponry they plan to put in orbit or is it already in orbit? We don't know. What we do know is there used to be two towers here and they aren't there anymore. Are directed energy weapons the best explanation? Or could nuclear reactions better account for the phenomenon? Like any other nuclear weapon, the Davy Crockett gives off three basic effects. Heat, blast, and nuclear radiation. Notice the geometry of this nuclear explosion.
A chemical signature of nuclear fusion is tritium, the radioactive isotope of hydrogen. Tritium levels 55 times higher than normal were found in the sewer water below ground zero. Stephen Jones is an expert in nuclear fusion, so we traveled to a 9-11 Truth Conference in Indiana and asked Stephen Jones about that. Tritium is an interesting character because tritium can come from other sources. And, I mean, uh, backlights of exit, I'm not saying that's what it was, but it could be just something like that. In other words, it can be a contaminant that arises not from nuclear reactions, but from backlighting. And uh, so, yes, the tritium was high, and that was reported and published, but it is not proof of uh, many nukes. That's the official story. Supposedly, the two airplanes had about 34 curies of tritium in the exit signs. Tritium is a lightweight gas. It's hydrogen. When released, it goes up into the upper atmosphere. To make it down into the water sample, it must first somehow be converted into tritiated water and sprinkle down to the ground into the sewer system, get diluted by two heavy rainstorms and a million gallons of fire hose water and still raise the sample up to 55 times the normal background level. In 1965, in Council, Alaska, there was a building fire involving the release of 3,000 curies of tritium, about 100 times more than what was supposedly released by the 9-11 airplanes. Water samples from that incident showed no tritium. None. Nuclear fusion can be initiated with a nuclear fission trigger. Uranium in nuclear fission typically breaks down into two rare elements, strontium and barium. The U.S. Geological Survey took samples from around Lower Manhattan. A nuclear event would also explain this. Ground Zero fumed for over 100 days through rainstorms, freezing temperatures, and constant watering. Judy Wood identifies the effect as ongoing molecular dissociation. What is this haze? Is it fire? Fire would have a point source. You could see where the fire was coming from, where it would be the strongest. Also, smoke tends to go up. This is just looming over the ground zero remnants. No point source, it's just hanging around there. What is it? This photo was taken at the end of October, Halloween, actually. But what is this white around here? If it were hot, these people would be cooked like on a grill. And it's hydraulics wouldn't work. Not only that, they'd permanently destroy their equipment. So they wouldn't have their equipment sitting there if it was going to be destroyed. The people wouldn't be alive if it were hot. What is this white stuff coming out of the ground? And then we notice up above here, you see misting. Why are they misting this? It's not fire. It's not hot. doesn't seem to be any more where the water is coming from. Water is just being added to, the, to this pile. But that's very dense white stuff, whatever it is. 
I don't, I don't white smoke for 100 days. White smoke Sorry, for it's, 100 days. Well, yeah, no, I, I, it's, it's, uh, mm, yeah, and makes so, you really wonder. Dr. Jones is rightly incredulous about the official smoldering fire story. Actually, some samples of that were taken by um, Tom Cahill, Thomas Cahill, UC Davis. I've been in communication with uh, Tom. Thermite, uh, the reaction produces aluminum oxide that comes off as an ash, a very fine powdery ash. But when it came to the question of aluminum oxide, he, um, he didn't answer. He wasn't impolite to me, he just simply didn't answer. <laughs> A nuclear fission chain reaction, once begun, continues until all the fissionable material is gone. This is the so-called China Syndrome, where heavy reacting elements burn downwards through everything. Could that be what caused this? This hole in the bedrock is directly under where the South Tower stood. The workers are filling in the hole with concrete. The surrounding rock appears to have melted and then re-solidified. Janitor Felipe David was working inside the North Tower. His co-worker, Willie Rodriguez, describes skin that was hanging off his body. Everybody started screaming, and a person comes running into the office saying, explosion, explosion, explosion. He got his hand extended, and all the skin was pulled from his, under, under his arm, all the way to the top of the fingertips, and it was hanging on both arms. Hanging and hanging. Exactly the same type of horrific radiation effect was described at Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. Inexplicable numbers of ground zero workers are coming down with rare cancers like leukemia and thyroid cancer. According to medical doctor Ed Ward, only radiation can explain this. First responder, Matthew Tartaglia. In January and February of 2002, uh, it became clear that I was very, very sick. I started sweating constantly. I, didn't, I, I would just walk down the hall and, to go to the bathroom or to get something to eat or get a cup of coffee, and I, I, I could not breathe. Tritium, strontium and barium, molecular dissociation, the meteorite, the mushroom cloud, the China syndrome, 1,400 melted motor vehicles, rare cancers. Are we really supposed to believe that airplane crashes caused all that? It looks like the aftermath of, of a huge atom bomb or something. Just, just the absolute disintegration of one of those. 